I'm Dave Friedel. I'm with the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources, a Division of Fisheries, and uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, one small portion of what we do. Uh, I'm out here at uh, the former Dunn Lock site, uh, now Dunn Rapids, and we're standing on the bridge that sits over the new channel. A couple of years ago, uh, we started to notice some pretty severe deterioration of the locks, and um, uh, we noticed the concrete was crumbling uh, from the inside, and so we started uh, looking for solutions to fix the broken infrastructure. As we were thinking about it, uh, we thought about what goals we want to accomplish uh, when we fix the infrastructure, and uh, we came up with a design that would uh, accomplish a number of things. Um, one of the things we were looking to do was uh, connect the habitat of the Pelican River system. Um, we're removing dams and connecting fisheries habitat all throughout the Red River Basin. And um, here in our own backyard, we had a fish barrier right on uh, DNR property. So that was one of our goals. We wanted to connect the habitat and create a fish passage uh, so fish could move freely between Big Detroit and uh, Pelican River, Otter Tail River, and even Red Lake and uh, Lake Winnipeg. So we came up with a plan that would um, create a rock rapids that fish would be able to pass over. Uh, also, we wanted to remove the safety hazard of the old dam. Those types of dams are known, um, uh, known as safety hazards and uh, replace the broken infrastructure. So uh, I guess we'll t take a walk down and uh, look, at the, look at the channel. So what we ended up doing was uh, creating this channel, as you can see. It's based on a design that's a, uh, a 20 to 1 slope, or a 5% slope. Uh, for every 20 feet of run, uh, it drops down a foot. So it's approximately 100 feet long, and every 20 feet it drops down about one foot. That keeps the velocities acceptable for fish moving up over the, over the channel. Um, it's certainly a lot more natural situation than, than what we had. We've observed fish in the channel, uh, all kinds of fish, uh, walleyes, northerns, muskies, suckers. Uh, they're using it quite freely, and uh, they're able to navigate up over it very easily. These rock, these large rocks that you see in the channel are, are what we call rock weirs. And they're set in roughly a U-shaped pattern with uh, the U part, the bottom of the U facing upstream, and the bottom, bottom of the U at a lower elevation than the, than the sides. So when the water comes over those rock weirs, it deflects in towards the center of the channel. Now this channel was designed to carry the exact same amount of water that the old two channels carried. Um, we calculated a rating curve for the old channels and uh, this channel is designed to carry the same amount of water at various elevations on Muskrat and Lake Sally. So that's one of the things we're doing this year. We're going to set up gauges and take flow measurements through the channel to make sure that the, the channel, the new channel, is conveying water exactly like the old channel did. Now, a channel like this provides all kinds of habitat for fish as well. Uh, northerns will use it for spawning, suckers will use it, other fish will use it as well. So this is, this is one of many projects that we've done in the Red River Basin in recent, uh, recent times. Uh, this past winter, the North Dam in Fargo was completed, where a rock slope was placed behind that lowhead dam. A couple years ago, Midtown Dam was completed. Uh, this past winter, um, the Riverside Dam in East Grand Forks was completed, and we got several more scheduled. There's a dam in Crookston that'll be done uh, within a year or two, and the large dam um, on the upper, or the lower end of the Red River at Drayton will be done within a couple years as well. So we're really looking to uh, connect habitat, not just here, but all throughout the Red River Basin. And I think it's gonna be a plus to our fisheries. Uh, we're introducing new fish species uh, that used to exist in these systems uh, back into the systems. Connecting the habitat is going to be really important um, to accomplish the goal of re-establishing those species in these lakes and rivers. Uh, one of those species is lake sturgeon. Now, we recently introduced lake sturgeon into Big Detroit, the Otter Tail River, uh, the Red River, um, and uh, we hope to see some returns on that in years to come. We won't necessarily see those returns, but our kids and their grandkids will. Uh, sturgeon live a long life, they live over a hundred years. Our kids and their kids will likely see the benefits. Hopefully within uh, 50 years or so we'll have uh, 40 and 50 pound fish swimming up the Pelican River into Big Detroit and behind Pomida even. 
thanks for joining us today. Uh, I hope this provides a little information about a small piece of what we do. Anglers, set your hooks. Jane K. Marine, CI Sport, Brushmark Signs, and Laden Broadcasting bring you the 15th Annual Real Country Classic two-day fishing tournament, June 5th and 6th on Otter Tail Lake. First place payout of $3,000 per day. Additional cash payouts for top teams, biggest northern, and walleye contests. Plus an additional two-day grand champion prize. Visit realcountry102.com for details and register. The 15th Annual Real Country Classic, June 5th and 6th, brought to you by Heart Lakes Meats, Undermart, and Ray's Sport Marine. This is the Fultz building. This is the Fultz building. This is the Fultz building. This is a Fultz building. And this is a Fultz building. And this is a Fultz building. And whether it's zero degrees like I'm out here in the snow today, or it's 70 above and sunny, these guys are out and they're gonna construct your building. Call Fultz building today. is stocking the Big Detroit Lake with one-year-old sturgeon. Uh, this is the third year of a uh, stocking program that began in 1997. We stocked in 97 and 98, uh, and on those two years we stocked sub-adult fish that were uh, anywhere from four to ten pounds and about four to ten years old. This is an effort to restore sturgeon to the Red River Basin. They used to exist here, they no longer exist primarily because of the dams that are located in the system uh, that basically cut sturgeon off from, from necessary spawning and rearing habitat. These fish came from the uh, hatchery uh, just off the Rainy River from the First Nations hatchery at, I think it's Emo, Ontario. And uh, they were spawned, uh, they originated from eggs from wild fish in the Rainy River, hatched in the hatchery and raised to one, one year old size. We're also going to be getting some eggs from them, from wild fish from this year. And we'll take and cast those eggs out in our hatchery and we'll stock the fry in several area rivers. We put uh, 350 fish in the Buffalo River, 350 fish in the Ottertail River, about 2100 or so in Ottertail Lake. Uh, we're really excited to have these fish going in. Uh, we've got about 751 fish we're putting in today. They're about 12 to 16 inches long. and. Again, they're about one year, one year old. About 20 years from now, some of the females will be mature. They'll run in the 40 to 50 inch range at that, at that age. Uh, and then they'll spawn about every four to six years. Uh, the males will mature at age 16. They'll be slightly smaller than the females in the upper 30 and 40 inch range. But uh, these fish have a potential to grow real old and real large. Uh, the biggest specimens that we've seen in the Red River Basin run in the neighborhood of 400 pounds and, uh, and are probably uh, a couple hundred years old. The Historical Museum has photos of fish in the 100 to 175 pound range. The sturgeon are remarkably docile fish. Um, we dove with them in the, in the Little Fork River and as we were down there on the bottom of the river with these fish, uh, you, the visibility was really poor. You couldn't see but maybe six inches in front of your mask and you'd bump up against these large things that felt like logs and they were sturgeon and you'd turn on your light and uh, you could swim right over to them and you really couldn't see them until you were about a foot away and then they'd kind of startle you with their size because they're just huge but you could swim up to them put your arm around them and basically pet them like you could a, a dog or a cat and they, they seemed to enjoy it almost and uh, Incredibly docile. Uh, there's absolutely nothing to fear uh, for, for people to fear uh, about sturgeon. There's just nothing. Uh, they just look scary to some people. <laughs> they look pretty cool to me. Okay, what we have here is a, a fish transport truck, and uh, we've got oxygen bubbling up in the tanks right now. And inside the tanks, we've got about 3,200 lake sturgeon. These are uh, called scoots, and they're, they're fairly sharp when they're young. When they grow up or mature, uh, they'll actually grow over the top of those bony structures, and they'll be fairly smooth, just a nice leathery feel. 
But they are uh, are a little sharp when they're young. And as Dennis was describing, the uh, the uh, mature fish um, or the hatchery fish uh, tend to be a little bit uh, less sharp than the than the wild ones. So this is a yearling sturgeon. Fairly tough. It's got a subterminal mouth that extends uh, quite a ways out, uh, especially when they're adults. Uh, the mouth extends out several inches, and uh, that allows them to feed on the bottom. Uh, all sorts of crustaceans, invertebrates, crayfish, uh, whatever they can get a hold of. Now the water's going to be a little bit cold for them because uh, you know, it's about seven degrees colder than the water uh, in the hatchery. And so they're going to have to adjust to it a little bit. It's going to be a little bit of a shock to them at first, but I think they'll do just fine. They're fairly hardy fish. And when the water's cool and cold, I think they'll seek out deeper water. The water temperatures are a little more stable in deeper water. And when it's cold, it's actually warmer in the depths. Uh, when, the, when the water starts to warm, uh, you should be able to see some of them up in shallow, warmer water uh, feeding. So as they grow bigger, um, there's going to be some interesting sightings on Big Detroit as uh, they become, uh, you know, sub-adults in that 10 to 20 pound range. <laughs> They'll start getting people's attention when they when they do accidentally catch them, and they will. They'll occasionally catch them down the road, but it'll be uh, be a few years yet before these are really caught. In '97 and '98, uh, we tagged all of the fish that went in, all of the subadult fish, with yellow tags that were uh, basically wired to their uh, to their fins on their back. And uh, many of those fish, about 25% of those fish, made their way down into the Red River and as far as Lake Winnipeg. However, none of the fish that we stocked in Big Detroit Lake uh, were recovered in downstream tag returns. So we think most of those fish are still in Big Detroit Lake. And there was a, only about 75 fish stocked in Big Detroit. The rest of them went in the otter tail during those two years. But we think most of those original 75 fish are still, still in the lake. We've got every reason to believe that most of them are. Hopefully we can get a population reestablished. Uh, possibly down the road, we'll, we'll even be able to see uh, a sturgeon um, angling season when the population builds to the point where it can sustain an angling season. Right now there's very few sturgeon angling seasons available in Minnesota. One is up on the Rainy River, the St. Croix River, and uh, the Kettle River in Minnesota are open. We hope some year to see uh, a strong, viable, healthy population of sturgeon in our lake community. looking for muskies to do an assessment on uh, how well they're growing and uh, if we're getting any natural reproduction and how our stocking program is working for the muskies. So we'll be looking at a, a few nets. We've got 12 nets out on uh, on Detroit and uh, Deadshot Bay and Little Detroit. The nets are, have a 5 by 6 frame and about a 5 foot hoop on it with a 100 foot lead so they're kind of big and awkward. We'll go try one now. We run it for 10 days. I think we've had uh, 38 fish so far. Yeah, we got one in here. Jump. See the large shadow in there. I don't know if you can. Man. Why do you catch them like this? Uh, this they're spawning right now, so this is uh, one of the times that they're they're coming up into the shallows, and uh, so we can we can get a chance to, to net them. And uh, we're looking at trying to get an idea how they're growing, and and uh, if we're getting any natural reproduction. Or, Take a take a scale off them to 
to get an idea of what, what your class they are. And a length and a weight. Put him in a cradle here to keep him from flopping around too much and he'll be taking a length and a weight and a scale sample and they'll be sexing the fish and uh, that'll give us some information on how well they're growing. find any muskies in that one. In the net you'll see a lot of other fish. We've seen a lot of walleyes and crappies and bluegills that incidentally get caught at the same time. We usually just clean those out of the net. Nice walleye in there. Three on the answer. Good dandy. 